Well, I'm not going to lie to you. Morale is low. Morale is low. So first things first, this is post commentary because I recorded the entire session and it didn't pick up any of the audio from my voice, even though I tested the microphone before I started recording. So that was a great start. But here we are about to engage Strike Group Varyag. I know how important this battle is. It's pretty much the make or break of this campaign at this point, as every other battle from Tarp really has been. But this one is, if I don't win this fight, we're going to be in a situation where we're in big trouble. So we have no planes available to us. We have no missiles left available to us. We just have to engage Varyag front on. The good news is our primary battleship is in pristine condition for this fight. Um, there's also an aircraft carrier group or something back here, or maybe just the garrison, that is causing me a lot of problems because they're constantly hitting me with planes. Um, I just decided to turn the radar off before I forget to do that later. We've also got our other planes heading up to come back. But the most important thing that's happening right now is this engagement with Varyag. So we might as well just get that over and done with. Now, first thing that happens is as soon as we unpause, we get a thermal signature. That means there's another incoming missile or plane. It is a plane. It is three planes inbound from that group at Kumdag, but there's nothing we can do about it. Let's just get into the fight. And what we have here are a whole ton of ships. We've got the Rasaga from Strawman. We've got the Humak from Sir Ose. That was just me tabbing out of the game to find the uh, the names of the ships. And then we have the Tarantul from Dyna as well. So it's a pretty nasty garrison, pretty nasty strike fleet. We've got three Griffins, a Bore, and the Tarantul. Uh, that explains where the missiles were coming from. You can see that each of these has two missiles. So two on, two on each Griffin, uh, what two on the Bore, and two on the Tarantul. That counts for the 10 that we were seeing being fired at us. Um, which is pretty terrifying. You can see the damage that the Watan's taken here. The Rusalka is a pretty, pretty nasty ship, as is the Humak. So I'm a little bit worried about this fight, honestly. The Sakars, maybe not going to clean this up as much as I wanted it to, but let's jump into a fight and see how we go. So the first thing you notice is we still are, are, are suffering a little bit from damage we've taken earlier on in the campaign. We're missing a vital part of our Palash culture. What I'm trying to do is just drop as quickly as I can, but both of these ships open up with AP ammo which is really, really nasty to see. Um, them being loaded with AP means they're gonna cleave straight through our armor, and even our double layer armor is not gonna keep us very well protected against ammo explosions or generator explosions, which is what's gonna plague us in this fight. Um, there you go, you can see there was a piercing shot there on the right-hand side of the ship. It's cleared out a whole ton of equipment. It's cleared out uh, some generators and some ammo. And it's actually taken out one of our AK-100s as well. We're doing an okay job at actually cleaving through these griffins, but the problem is because they have the AP ammo, they're getting taking us apart really quickly as well. And the top of our ship's getting ablated really nicely right now. Still fighting here. This is the third griffin. If we can take this out, we're in a pretty decent situation. The Bore has arrived. The Bore is armed with zeniths. Um, luckily, we do manage to avoid that missile, but we, we, we take some unfortunate fuel damage there. We have an ammo explosion on the right-hand side. What I really need to be doing right now is actually having the left side of the ship facing this griffin. I'm just letting it fire into open armor all this time, but I'm under just a little bit too much stress by the Bore power, pouring fire on me from above. Now the griffin's dead, I'm quite happy to switch the Bore. Um, it shouldn't be too hard to kill on its own. I'm trying to get it below it. I was hoping that it wouldn't be able to shoot me from below, but I think the design has guns at each corner of the fuel tank. So it has coverage no matter where I sit. Um, and they did quite a nasty number on us with that, with that AP barrage. Here comes another one. Looking at this now, I can see that being at an angle to these ships is actually really nasty. So that's three guns shooting around them too. We're on fire again. Look at the state of our ship. The Sakaar is in a really bad way. Uh, it's, it's pretty bad, I'll be completely honest. And uh, I'm actually considering restarting when we get to this point in the fight because I'm looking at how much damage the Sakaar has taken. And I really don't think the trade-off was worth it. Now when I see that we've got 43 crew dead, I, I decide I have to try again. I can't take that result. It's just too it's it's just too negative. It's too bad. So I go in again. Um, I decided to try the prox fuse out. My plan was to try and shoot down enemy ordnance with the prox fuse. The problem we have here is that the ammunition, uh, the caliber of weapon that the Griffins are using, the Salkas, is actually too low for me to shoot down with prox fuse ammo. See here, I try and shoot it down. I don't actually try and shoot this down. I do, um, but the, the, the prox fuse just isn't interested in it. I'd be better off with just a 37 millimeter to try and shoot that fire down, but it won't detonate the prox fuse at all. I'm taking a massive beating there. We're actually holding up on the armor stakes a little bit better. I'm trying not to use my AK-100s here to keep the prox fuse ammo in my pocket, but it means my DPS is much, much lower. So it's taking a lot longer to kill this first Griffin. You can see they're still just concentrating fire on the same spot on our ship all the time. I see an opportunity there and open up with everything, but that pretty much clears me out of Proxfuse. That's me out of Proxfuse now. We're loading standard ammo to the screen. The generator has been destroyed. 
The second griffin is above us. There's a penetrating shot. The same shot last time. The same ammo explosion as last time. So we've opened up another hole in the ship, unfortunately. That really affects our structural integrity and a lot of our power. And again, I need to get the left side of the ship facing these enemies as soon as possible so that I can take advantage of the fact that I still have on that side. We're doing a pretty good job of shielding ourselves using the, the middle griffin to protect us from the top griffin so they can't fire at us and give us a little bit of safety. So we're only engaging one ship at a time, which is a strategy I try and employ as much as I can. Um, you'll see I still use it here. I keep myself positioned between the, the wreck of the old ship and that ship for that barrage there. And it keeps me pretty safe from the griffin. Now we just have to cleave our way through this griffin as fast as we can. Nasty prox fuse hit from the Mori above us. And the fight just kind of degenerates a little bit here with them getting below us. Taking a lot of damage now from the prox fuse hitting us from above. You can see the whole top of the ship has basically been cleaved away. And we're struggling to now deal with this griffin. We've lost about 50% of our primary weapons. Maybe not quite that much, we've lost about 25% of our primary weapons. And I decide at this point we've taken too much damage that even if I was to win this fight, we'd be in too bad a situation. So I decide to reload one more time and go at it again. You can tell that I'm under a lot of stress here. I'm talking about how we're taking a lot of damage into the armor here. It's, it's not holding up as well as I was expecting it to. So we jump into our third attempt at this fight. And the first thing I try and do is lose height as fast as possible so these ships do not get below us. Um, being sandwiched between them isn't great, but it does mean they can't focus their fire on any one side. Um, we've got another nasty barrage of armor-piercing fire from that uh, ship there, and I managed to get both of them on the same side of us. And my plan is to do what I did with, in that last fight and use one griffin as a shield against the other, but I need to gain a little bit of height to do that. Now I've got the angle set up so the back griffin can't fire at us. I need to drop height a little bit. They're going to keep jockeying for position between the two, but I should be in a good position. And that was a quick kill on that griffin. I think that's the fastest one we've had so far. Again, we use the griffin wreckage as a shield against one of the barrages. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm firing off a couple of rounds of AK-100 to clear the palash, and then firing the 180mm um, in behind that to hit the, the, the superstructure. I'm thinking this griffin may be dead. It's got a really nasty rotation, but it does seem to recover. Um, we're not in a great position here because I can't actually hit it with all of my guns now that it's below us. I decided to just tank a little bit of fire on the bottom, which does lose us a lot of engines, but... It honestly wasn't worth it, but I thought it might just be worth taking a hit there. Last Griffin now, last Rasulka. Again, armor-piercing rounds, no palish to stop it. Takes off quite a little bit of the superstructure in the top left of the corner of the column. We've obviously got that um, warrior above us now as well, hitting us with the, the prox fuse. The Griffin is in a bad state. Incoming missile, I managed to flare it away from us. It's almost dead. Don't take much to take it out. And that's it down. Now he's going to deal with the board with his box fuse. It shouldn't take too much to kill this. It's a smaller ship. It's much more compact. But we've got a really nice angle on it here. An incoming missile. I'm launching flares. I just want to make sure this doesn't hit me. I actually managed to shoot it down with the AK-100. I'm trying to dodge a little bit of its fire there as well. It's got a nasty tilt. It's um, not staying in the air very well. It's lost its engine on that side. And that is it down. We just have to deal with the uh, Tarantor, the Dyna. And this ship doesn't really have much in the way of an offensive loadout, so it's not really a big threat to us. We can just, we can just deal with it when we need to. And that's it pretty much down now. And that's that fight over. So we've walked out of without too much damage on our ship. We've done okay. Not brilliantly, but we've done okay. And I'm happy, I'm the most happy with that result. And for the first time in the campaign, we actually get some experience, which means we get a level up on the Sakaar. And one of the options here is Battle Scars, which is 20% faster repair speeds, which I just can't turn down, considering how much time these ships are spending in repair. So that's the one that I go for. Now, I've got a lot of stuff to grab here. There's three D80 Molots, there's an MR500. That's a lot of money's worth of equipment. We really need that. Um, one thing we're to watch out for, though, is these three aircraft that are on their way in. There isn't really much we can do. We just have to kind of deal with them. They're coming from that city, and what I want to do is actually get rid of the garrison in that city. So I decided just to use what fuel we have left and send the Sakaar on instantly to go and clear that garrison out um, while the rest of the fleet does a salvage job. Because, in my opinion, there's just it's just not worth leaving them there to launch planes at us. We need to get them taken out, so we're just going to do that now. I was hoping we could maybe get off before the planes arrived, but sadly we didn't. Although we're in an interesting situation where I have one plane in the air and one plane not. But it doesn't give me control of that. It gives me control of the Gepard. And I'm not able to shoot down those bombs before they come in and take out quite a lot of the Gepard, unfortunately. It took some pretty serious damage there, which is a real shame. 
Um, but we'll continue on. We're doing the repair mission on the base, and the Sakaar is on its way to the unnamed city. Rest of the fleet's on the move as well. It's just a case of getting them there as soon as possible. Well, the rest of the fleet's on its way to come, I should say. We've got more aircraft incoming. Um, on th they're going to be intercepted by the Sakaar. Two planes with 14 rockets. Um, I try and line up a shot here, but I'm just a little bit too low. We take most of that barrage to the face. Um, try to shoot down at least one of the planes to get a little bit of revenge. I don't think I managed to get one. Oh, I managed to clip that one with an AK-100 round, which is which is better than nothing. But I think we took some pretty serious damage there. I think that was a big bit of damage to our undercarriage, which is where a lot of our armor and uh, our armor is in the generators. Um, more planes incoming. Just one aircraft. This one's six missiles. Might be this engagement actually that does the damage. Must be trying to range fight. I actually thought I killed it there, but actually, what, what, what happened was the AK-100s hit a rocket. It just manages to fly through that AK-100 barrage, which is a real shame. I would have liked to have taken it out. You can see a little spin of frustration um, as that happens. And we continue on to the Unknown City. At this stage, I'm really concerned about... Well, I am just in general really concerned about my sustainability of this campaign. It is proving really, really difficult. I think if I'd gone with um, Audacity 2s and uh, lots of light chips, Howler 2s, Audacity 2s, some little tankers, I could have done a lot better because I'd be able to dodge these missiles a lot, with a lot more ease. But as it is, I'm just having to tank so much fire that I really can't stay up in the air. Um, I thought we were going to fly past for a second there, but it's just the angle. And here we have our garrison. This is a Dirty Harry. This is a Gladiator replacement. This is the first new ship we've seen here. Um, the Flower and the Valiant, etc. We've seen all of those before. But the Dirty Harry is a new ship, so it's quite nice to see something new. It's quite a nice uh, Gladiator design. We're really compact, very heavily armored. And the 6 AK 100s is nothing to be sneezed at. It's the same, actually the same loadout as the Sakaar secondary weapons, which is, which is we know is a, is a good loadout. I'm basically saying if I keep the enemy on the left right hand side of myself, we'll be able to do quite well here. Unfortunately, they all spawn on the left hand side, which instantly puts me in a really bad position. I also discovered there that we do not have flares on the ship anymore, um, which is why I had a really late intercept. Honestly, I don't play this particularly well. I spend too much time at the top of the play space with the enemies on the left hand side. What I should have done is dropped low really quickly and gone down to the bottom of the screen as fast as I could. Um, I actually, I'm tempted to retry there. I almost rage quit, but. I, I know I need to watch my morale really carefully, so I don't actually do that. That hit was devastating. We've lost so much of our undercarriage. I do decide to restart at that point. Going again. And I try to play this a little bit more intelligently. The first thing I'm looking for is the flower. Taking the flower out will mean just this continual stream of missiles will not happen. Try to dodge that missile. It hit our power. I think we didn't take too much damage from it. The valley below us is just being a real pain. That's the flower now. Now I need to deal with the gladiator has a really, really crazy barrage. Like all gladiators, though, it's still a little bit weak from below, which is what we go for. And that's a kill on it. Not quite a kill on it. And there's the kill on the it. Next up, we're going to take out this the Valiant, um, which is the last threat on the battlefield. And then there's the CD7, which doesn't have any guns, so it's a pretty easy to kill. But that's the Sakaar having dealt with um, the garrison at the unnamed city, which just gives us a little bit of breathing room. We now don't need to worry about any more airstrikes coming out of this location, which is good because that was a big problem for us. A uh, couple of things to loot as well. We've got some AK-100s, uh, zen some Zeniths as well. There's three Zeniths there. Um, we're going to grab the fuel tanks and then grab the Zeniths is my plan. Our other fleet detects a thermal signature. I look at the IRST, there's a very faint trace in the top left-hand corner, around about 100 degrees, which I do notice, and I can see that there's something incoming, probably a plane or a missile. I have no way to defend this fleet against that right now. Um, it is, in fact, some incoming aircraft. So we have... Um, I tell the crew to dismantle the MR500, and we've got three aircraft incoming. The Gepard only has two of its guns. She has three of its guns left. I'm trying to get them to do something here. We might shoot down a couple of those missiles, but that's it. The Watan clips the plane but doesn't kill it. It's coming around for another strike but burns out, which is at least something. But that really wasn't a very great defense. Um, I think most of it hit what was left of the armor on the left-hand side, which is the only saving grace we've got there. Could have been much, much worse, I suppose, but taking any strike at the moment is pretty bad. One of the big problems we've got is we've just got some very big ships landed in the middle of the desert where there's no protection for them and the enemy know where they are, and we need to change that narrative really, really quickly. The rest of our fleet is on its way up to Kumdag still. There's nothing much happening there. We managed to recover the fuel. 
I think I've got enough time to grab the Zeniths now, but I think I grab an AK-100 first with the hope that I can grab the Zeniths afterwards because the Zeniths are worth a lot of money when you sell them as a bulk, which is what we're going to do here. Uh, that fleet is finished. They're just refueling now. So as soon as they're refueled, we'll get them out of there. Just waiting on the rescue here. See what we can get. The more stuff we can loot, the more money we have, the more money we have, the longer this campaign can keep going for. What I actually really want are repair parts. Repair parts make you... I mean, you don't have to pay for repairs, and they speed repairs up, but I'm just not getting the opportunity to, to um, salvage them off anyone, unfortunately. But repair parts would make a really big difference to our campaign. So this would be just... I was actually talking about how I need to get to Uma. Um, my plan is to basically get our ship down to Tushan and repair Tushan and try and ambush an enemy fleet at Uma on the way. Now there's this Tarkan here in the Unnamed City, which is just an added kick in the teeth, really. Um, let's see who it is. I think I'm talking about how important it is to get a Tarkan to come. So people leading the crowd look quite like the rest. They're dressed in full black full body suits with fur trim, weapons in their sides, gilded swords at their hilts. They surround a young woman who walks towards you with great confidence. You immediately recognize who it is. After all, there aren't many female clan leaders. So my notes have her down as a proud Elim. So I greet her with glory to Garrett in the hopes that she will be my friend. Um, and I think that's an okay start. I think I was just talking about how um, last time we didn't manage to get our hands on her and it would be really nice to actually to, to get her to join our side for once. So if we go for glory to Garrett, um, it's our worldview up by one. And um, she is a proud Elaim. So, peace upon your house, Grand Duke. I am a Nakeb, Duchess of the Sea Clan, and I say I'm looking for allies to wage war in Kiva. Um, and then I get these, and I'm thinking, well, she's. I'm pretty sure kindness is a big deal for her. So I go, first of all, on the woes of the people and how you wish to aid them. Of the war with Kiva, I don't think she's particularly happy, but, and I definitely don't think she's pro Romani, but I think she's pro kindness. So I go for the woes of the people, which is a great start. She greatly values kindness. I get two points for that, one star. At this point, I could end the talks and she would join me. Um, but I decided to, to give her my deep, the deep respect of the Tarkin. There's only two choices here. Um, I probably should have actually just said the other one again, but now I find out that she's afraid of me. Or she's not afraid of me. I'm not sure how that works out. So I need to get something back to bring her back on side. So looking at everything here, I know she's not going to like the Romani Empire. I don't think she's very faithful. I don't think she's very superstitious. I think she is faithful. So I think going for faith will be bad. So I decided to go for um, the Order Push. Uh, sorry, the justice push, but she hates that, so she hates me even more. Um, of the options here, I go for the wealth push, but turns out she loves wealth, and she hates me even more, and now my only options of how I'm a good friend, and she uh, gets the plus one for the fear, but by this point it's too late, Shavar, I've already lost her. I lost her pretty much as soon as I picked a second option. I should have just stopped at one star and taken the money, because she would have given me 10,000 in funds. As it turns out, I get 3,000 gold from her, and she leaves. And I just watch her blast off as Duchess Issy yet again leaves my life without joining my fleet. So that's a great, a great move. Um, we need to grab some fuel so we can get to Tushan. And what else is there? And then I realize we need to repair the ship. It's taken a lot of damage. Um, but if we can get the landing gear repaired, we can land it when we get it to Tushan. So I decided to just queue up enough repairs to get that landing gear back in action. Um, even though it's going to take, I think, 26.5 hours when it's fully done. For the whole leg is going to take 26.3 hours and cost me 750 credits. But we have to get it repaired so we can land the ship in a better repair bay. So that's what I do. I queue that up and then I get the rest of the fleet, I think, moving over pretty soon once they finish refueling to join us at the unnamed city. Meanwhile, at Cumtag, we've got one ship arriving. I'm shaking to see what's available here. We need fuel. I want to get them to join them at Tushan. So I just start that ship refueling with enough fuel to make it to Tushan. I also want to see what they've got for sale here. There is some bugged T7s I sold here before, but there's nothing I really want. So just leave that to go. My hope is that I can also make use of the intel to find another strike group. There are some T7s for sale in the unnamed city, which is good. We could grab those on the way out if we need to. For now, I just want to get the Sun Strike Alarm to fade out, and I want to get some repairs done. So we've got 26.3 hours or so for repairs on the Sakaar. The other fleet is in the air and rejoining it in the Unnamed City. But we need to get a refuel for it as well. Excuse me. 
Um, and then I'm just kind of really worried about the aircraft carrier group. And then I end up using the compass here to kind of give myself an idea of how far they've been able to reach out to. Because I'm assuming that they're the ones launching the planes that keep hitting us all the time. At, that t at this point, I'm not considering that garrison to the north of us as Shubat and Neil as being a location where planes could be flying from. I'm thinking they're all coming from Merlin, which is up there in the north. Which is why I mark what I think is the maximum range of its planes using the compass. Um, we'll see if that's true or not in a few minutes, actually. So we're just doing some fleet maneuvers here, bringing everyone back together, trying to get the fleet amalgamated a little bit. Um, that's the hope, at least. And yeah, I'm talking about heading to Tushan. The big problem about heading to Tushan, though, is there could be some enemy ships at Shethe, which is what I had a second ago. And they could cause me some problems while I'm repairing, because the enemy will know my location while I'm in Tushan. If I can get away from the enemy here, they'll head over towards um, the unnamed city, and I can fade out to sort of southeast. Um, but I need to make sure the southeast is safe to move into that direction. It's also moving backwards, and we really need to be moving forwards. Honestly, the fuel tax in this game is really making, putting me in a very, very difficult position. So just making sure we've got enough fuel to make it back to Tushan. Looking at repairs as well. Um, selling the things that we managed to loot from those corpses. I decide to sell the Zeniths here because I just decide I want the money. We're going to sell 21,000. We're almost rich. Not. Um, but at least we got some cash for once. That, that, that is the one down, one upside of engaging Varya because we walked out of it with a, quite a bit of money. And um, one thing I'm really missing in this campaign is having ships that are fast enough to intercept trade fleets. A big part of my income in previous campaigns was, was, rest, was stealing them and I just haven't been able to do that this time. So again, we just need to buy fuel to get this fleet over to Tushan, which is what I do. Cost me set, uh, quite a lot, 2,000 credits for that much fuel. But that would at least mean we can bring the whole fleet back together, which is kind of how it should be, honestly, with the loadout that we're running. And I just fast forward while they refuel in the hopes that nothing bad is going to happen. And for once, nothing bad does happen. Now, I was hoping that I'd get another intel point by the time the fleet had finished refueling, but I didn't. So I decided to check for a tactical group and find out there's an aircraft carrier group in Shubaninil. Um, aircraft carrier group Albatross. And that puts me in a really difficult position because if they work out where we are, they're going to launch a ton of planes at us from very close range. I'm like, oh, so we have an aircraft carrier group in Merlin and we have an aircraft carrier group, sorry, in um, Garpathra and one in Shubat. We need to deal with that. So having a look at the Sakar, it's in a, sorry, this is the Muhit I'm looking at here. The Muhit's in a pretty good state right now. So I decide to send it into combat to clear uh, Shubat. I have a debate here with myself. It's like, do we just fade right to to, Khan, uh, to Unnamed City or do we engage? And I decide that the amount of things that I've done so far, the risky decisions I've made, if I stop making risky decisions at this point, they've all kind of been for a waste. I need to keep trying to seize on the initiative when I can. So I order the fleet to Shubat and Enlil to clear out this aircraft carrier group in the hopes that it'll give me the breathing space I need to uh, get the rest of the fleet repaired. And that's why they start heading north. It's very risky, it's probably a huge mistake, but it's what I decide to do here, and I just have to kind of live with that choice. Oh, that's the puppy leaving. One sad thing that you're missing out on is that while I was recording this, the puppy was in the seat next to me dreaming and doing little dream barks, which would have been picked up in the recording, but unfortunately now are not, because she's not asleep anymore. And it's probably getting ready for some mischief. So I fast forward until we get into range. We're actually, um, we're, there's no chance of a sound strike here because the enemy will have radar and we don't have any detectors to even know if they're pinging us. Um, but at least the enemy don't know our location is right now, which gets us get quite close before they know we're coming. I'm kind of thinking that if they do launch at us, we have three planes in this fleet. I can go and buy AAMs and have them instantly teleport to this fleet and we can use them to defend. The enemy have just radioed in our position, which is kind of good because they now think we're at Shubat Inlil and not all the way over towards Tushan. And I'm just watching here for any airplanes being launched. Which will happen in a second. Oh, will it? Do we get away with no planes? I thought some planes came for us. No, they don't manage to get any planes off, which means they've all probably been destroyed. And we can see here we've got a Pilot of Mark II, um, CV-7, Flower and Slogger, so that's where the planes were coming from. The Pilot of Mark II is a little bit nastier than I was expecting to see in this garrison, but the, the Muhit should be able to take it out. So I just jump straight into the fight. I kind of, you'll need us in this fight that I ignore the CV-7 and try and focus on the Flower, because the missiles the Flower can throw out are quite annoying. What this does is the CV-7 kind of acts as a shield and keeps flying between me and the other ships. Kind of like I was trying to use the enemy ships before, but it makes it quite hard for me to actually deal with it. 
Um, you can see there, I kind of blocked a shot for a second. I was quite lucky being able to dodge that Paladin attack. That was a really nice hit there on the uh, flower. It's almost dead. It let's it down. As we try to shoot down the incoming shells, which is something I've been doing throughout the campaign, but a lot of people have been calling me out for not doing it. But if you if you watch, I do try and shoot down shells with my 37mm fire, but sometimes I do hold it back if I think it's a missile going to be coming in. And then I remembered, oh, we actually have Zeniths on the ship, so we should probably launch those before they get destroyed. And I launched my remaining Zenith up in the Paladin. And for once, it actually gets through without being intercepted, which doesn't happen very often. A prez there, slightly misleading. It was the um, CV-7 that was destroyed, not the Paladin, even though it fell like the Paladin should have been destroyed by that missile. And that's it down, uh, which is pretty good kill. Pretty fast kill on the, the Paladin. Nasty ship. Uh, this slogger is just going to die pretty quickly as well. It's not really a, a combat vessel. It's pretty, proving to be pretty resilient, though. I'm pretty impressed at how much firepower it's actually taking. And that's it down. So that's that, air that aircraft carrier group dealt with. And at this point, I start to wonder if the game will flag any garrison that has something like a CV-7 in it as a aircraft carrier group, uh, which could be a problem. Sadly, I don't get battle scars, but we do have Royal Guard, which is a very good upgrade, so we grab that. Because if it is if it is going to mark every garrison that has an air, a CV-7 in it as an aircraft carrier group, it means that doing an intel sweep from a ta from a intel center for tactical groups may prove to be very, very bad. So at this point, I'm like, great, we've taken Shubana nil. We need to refuel and get out of here because we're going to get retaliatory strikes from the aircraft carrier in Kabatha and possibly from anywhere else as well. So we need to watch out for that really, really carefully. We grab the fuel tanks to get out of here. Already the plan is just to get this fleet away from the city as soon as possible so that I can move them over towards our friends in uh, the unnamed city, which is 11.5 hours of repairs left to get that landing gear sorted out. Got a reasonable amount of fuel there. I decided just to like see if that fuel is enough to get us there. So I just... And then that happens. Incoming missile from the north. Interesting angle. That's come from quite far away. Or it's possibly come from a strike fleet that's crossing the desert um, and is getting close to us. At this point, I jump into the supplies. Um, think, oh, no, I need to go to shipworks. Then I went, no, I actually do need to go to the supplies. You can't get AAMs from the shipwork section. So I go back to supplies. I buy the AAMs. I decide to buy three when I should have bought six. Because um, I was thinking about three loadouts, but I need six missiles for three loadouts because I have three planes available. And I get this fleet here to launch a plane to intercept that incoming missile. Attention. In hopes that it can shoot down, contact. which we haven't had great luck at so far. And there's also aircraft inbound. We have one plane coming at us, which isn't too bad, um, honestly. One plane is, is not that too risky. And we actually get a shoot down. I think they actually shot it down without needing to use a missile, which is annoying, but whatever. That's it down. Um, incoming plane, I'm debating whether I want to send something up against it. Do I want to like launch an AAM? Is it worth it? And at this point, I don't think it's worth it, but I do want to kill it. So I launched two planes just using the 37mm to try and get them to dogfight it. It's not a T7, however. Um, and you can see that because it's a slower plane, our faster planes actually really struggle to get a bearing on it in this engagement. Um, so they come in here. It's an LA-29. They don't make a kill on the pass. And basically, they spend the entire rest of the battle trying to turn into it. But because of its slower speed, it, it can actually just outturn them every time, and they don't ever get a shot on it again, which is unfortunate. Um, but if you check the the weapon loadout, this the ship this plane isn't actually armed with anything. It's just coming in for an attack run with its machine gun here. Um, so it must have been a scouting plane from the enemy. And unfortunately, I just try so hard to hit it. Um, but I do actually finally manage to catch it with a big blast of 80 millimeter, which is again something. Uh, so with 30 millimeter. And then we detect another missile incoming, quite a slow one. So I send the two planes to intercept that. Um, there is a chance they could shoot it down, but not from that angle, unfortunately. Uh, but I order them to to reattempt. Sorry about the creak. The chair is a bit old. I uh, order them to retask on an intercept, trying to again stop that from hitting us at Shubat. And notice that we have a ballistic missile incoming, an ICBM. So that's an R3 about to hit us, and it just comes in so fast. There's very little I can do to react to it. Um, that's pretty bad sign if they're hitting us at Shuba Namil. At this point, I decide just to order the fleet out of the city. Um, I decide to abandon the fuel that they've got there. I decide to get them up in the air and get them away, because if there's more R3s incoming, I'm not going to be able to defend against them very well. I try and shoot this down. I miss. The CV-7 gets destroyed by that ballistic missile, which is devastating. Our planes attempt another intercept on that missile and fail. I order them to intercept it again, and for whatever reason, the game gives me another instant intercept, which they fail. 
So I decide to order them to intercept it again, and the game gives me another instant intercept, which they actually succeed. So it took them three attempts. Now the planes return to the fleet, but there's no aircraft carrier for them to land on, and I assume they've been lost. Um, that's not actually the case, and you'll see later on in the video what I mean by that, but right now, I think I've lost those planes, and we get the fleet out of there. So then I come here, and I fuel up the, uh, I think about basically getting a ship carrying fuel to intercept them. I fuel up the Watan, tell it to go and join them, and it can carry over enough fuel to get them back to the unnamed city, get them away from the city I've just been detected in. And that actually is kind of a win for me, because the enemy will hopefully be launching ordnance and planes at Shubanamil for a while, letting me repair and rearm and reconsolidate a little bit in peace until they discover that I'm not there, because they will be launching things blindly into the fog of war, um, which works out fine. It, it's, like a, it's a bonus. It's actually something good for me for once. So all we're really waiting on here is for the fleet transfer to complete and then for the repairs to finish on the Muhit. It's going to take a couple of minutes for that to happen. We actually managed to get these repairs done without it being too much drama, which also makes a really nice change. You notice the city has turned to dangerous, which sucks. But I'm also kind of like, if you call the Lord Governor and be like, oh, there's some enemy, there's some enemy, um, Romani ships here in unnamed city, will they actually be able to find you? So coming into the shipbuilder here, I actually discover that those ships, those planes, are available in my inventory, but they're marked as loadout 37 millimeter. So I think these are just the, the planes that maybe land on the ship. So I just sell them in case they're bugged. I noticed that there's two bug T7s on our aircraft carrier as well, and I sell those. The plan being to pick up some T7s when we get the chance at some point. But right now, I do not have the time to equip them, unfortunately. And I don't buy the T7s just now, which I maybe should have done. That, could, that might be a mistake, missing out buying those. Looking at the, the Muhit here, it's not too badly damaged. It doesn't really need that much work to repair it. The Zakara needs more work than it does. Um, and we just wait for refueling to complete. But I'm going to have to buy some more fuel to make it over to Chen now that we've got the whole fleet here. So I just top up with enough. Going through quite a lot of our cash to do so. But I think the advantage of us moving to this position into Shan and getting a decent repair off makes up for the the expense that we're spending right now. I think it's really, really important that we do it um, because it'll get us back into the fight in the long term. And it also means we can start drawing the strike groups south in the hopes of taking them apart in pieces, one by one, rather than engaging them all at once with garrisons and missiles and stuff. If we can pull them into our inverted comma safe territory, it puts us in a much, in a superior situation really to deal with these. So that's me pulling out of the unnamed city now. I'm putting some space between us and Shubat Emil. Emil? Emil. Yeah, it's Emil. And we make it there without any incident, which is nice. It's nice for things to go right for once, you know? And we land here at Tushan. And now I've got one really important task I need to do. I need to land the Muhit to get it repaired. I'm actually confused the Muhit and the Sakaar here. It was actually the Sakaar I wanted to land, but both of these ships need to be repaired. So I try to get the Muhit down. And looking at the, the landing bay here, I see that there's a 242 repair bay. So I decide to see if I can slide the ship in there. I think that would be a pretty good place to, to repair it. Um, I'm worried that I'm a little bit too wide for the repair bay, but I decide to give it a go. I'm just going to take a few minutes for that to happen. Very careful landing here. I think I've got it pretty perfect. But as I'm coming down, you can see I clip the edge of the landing bay there, and we lose quite a lot of the side of the ship in that landing. Um, if we'd finished with a 350, I probably would have taken it. Uh, but looking at the state of it, I decided to retry, and there's a 110 landing bay just to the right of the center that I decided to land on instead, thinking that a safer landing is probably a better choice. And this is a very weird landing. I've never seen the game behave like this before. But when I come down and get the feet on the floor, if you watch the right leg in the representation, you'll notice it just keeps sliding, which is a, which is an interesting... I've not, I've not seen it, it slide like this. It's probably because it's a sloped landing bay. But you'll see when I get down, the right leg just keeps kicking out. Actually, it's the left leg that's kicking out. 
It's like pushing it over, which is just really, really weird behavior. So I try and correct. I'm trying very hard not to damage the side of the ship. And it happens again, just sliding off to the right, which is really just infuriating, to be completely honest. So I bring it back again, and I think I bring it back a little bit too hard this time, and we smash some of the armor on the side, although just a little bit less than we did when we were on the 242, but I got the 220 because I'm on the other bay, so I decided to just take it, and I decided to see how much and how long it's going to take to repair the ship. So we're going to go for a Muhit Mark 1, um, and we'll just do a full repair. So actually getting all the pieces back on is going to take about 29 hours and then getting everything back to full is going to take 42 hours. So two days to repair the ship honestly is pretty good. Um, it's not going to cost us that much money either. The problem is, is I'm not repairing the Sakaar, I'm repairing the Muhit, but that's fine for now. And then I notice we've got this enemy um, garrison at Seth here, which could cause me some problems. Sorry for the creaks. So what I'm deciding here is what do I want to do? Do I actually want to spend the time committing to that attack just now? Do I want to send the Sakaar on its own to just clear that garrison and hope that they don't hit us? Or do I want to wait until they've detected us and do something about it? And while I'm debating that, I buy a lot of fuel to get there, but while I'm debating it, I decide that maybe this is a good point to stop the video so that I can sit and, and basically come at this in a, in a good tactical sense, having thought about my options rather than just jumping in to another idea that could get me into more trouble like it, I did with that, that aircraft attack this video. So the good news is we killed Strike Group Varyak. That means there's two of the five Strike Groups are dead. Um, and we managed to destroy a pretty, sorry, avoid a pretty massive enemy attack this 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 video, but it, we also are in a difficult situation where we got our two primary ships um, damaged, and we've spent pretty much all the money that we made taking out Varyag, and we haven't actually gained any ground, which it's money that's going to kill me in this campaign. I think I just can't keep everything repaired and fueled. It's so so hard, especially with some of our ships being real guzzlers. So that's where we are right now. Um, I know it's a shorter video, but there was a lot happening, and I wanted to get through it properly. And um, I hope you're still enjoying these. I very much am, and I hope to catch you in the next video. But I'll say ciao for now.